I wanted to coach people. I wanted to encourage people. I wanted to help people grow and find their voice and find their calling. And that's what I do now with my writing and with my coaching and everything that I do. Welcome to the Impact Driven Entrepreneur, the podcast that helps you expand your reach and convert that reach into clients so you can lead your tribe with confidence and create change in the world while living the life you desire. And now your host, certified business coach and consultant, Mariana Ruiz. Want to increase your sales without so much hustle? Oh my gosh. Let's talk about doing funnels. Funnels are like the thing right now, but whether it's challenge, a tripwire, a webinar, or even getting people on the phone, guess what? All of that is the same. It's a sales process and what some people call funnels, okay? And I want to help you with your sales process because here's the thing. When you can really master and improve that process, you will get more sales in your business. Normally inside of my six month coaching program, what I do is I actually look at everything that my clients do. I look at all of their copy, all of their emails, everything that they're doing inside of a launch or outside of a launch. And really, I want to bring that element to a small intensive for you. So what I want to do is offer you the opportunity for me to look at all of your emails, all of your copy, whether it's a challenge, a funnel, a webinar, or a sales call. I will actually listen to your sales call. Yeah, you heard that, right? Okay, so in order to get this amazing offer, it's called a funnel intensive. You can find it at impactdrivenentrepreneur.com slash work with me. You can purchase there right away. Or if you want to get on the phone and just make sure it's a good fit for both of us, I'd be happy to chat with you. Let's optimize that sales process so that you can start generating more sales in your business without the grind. Hey there, and welcome back to the Impact Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, I have James Prescott. He is an author, a creative coach, and a podcaster. And today, we are going to be talking about creativity, writing, and being authentic. This is something that I'm really excited to bring to you because I think authenticity is such an important part about building your brand, growing your business, and really reaching those goals in integrity. So welcome, James. Great to have you here and talking with us. Yeah, it's great to be here, Marianne. Thank you. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how you got started doing what you're doing and kind of what your journey looked like. Wow. That's a long journey. (laughs) Well, I've always been kind of into writing since I was young, but I started writing properly about 15 years ago, I started blogging, really just for my own kind of benefit. I just liked writing, basically. So I just wrote about the things that meant the most to me. But then about seven years ago, I bumped into a couple of people who challenged me to take it further, you know, get my stuff out to more people, take it more seriously, be more professional. And so that's what I did. I got a self-hosted blog. I started writing ebooks and getting my website professionally designed and writing more regularly and to a higher standard as well. And I got to a point where I was kind of losing my authenticity and my platform wasn't growing because of it. I kind of got a bit distracted by the whole idea of success and things. And that plays to your ego, especially as a writer. Writers have egos. And yeah, well, I kind of got lost a little bit. So I decided to take a break and I didn't publish anything for months publicly. I just wrote for myself, basically. And every day I wrote 15 minutes for myself, just whatever was inside of me, whatever came to my mind. And it turned out that became one of the most creative periods of my life, the time when I most enjoyed writing. And I really found my voice at that point. Started talking about authenticity, started talking about the creative process, started talking about what it means to live an authentic life and create authentic work and to be true and to balance the kind of realities of having to promote your work and market your work, but trying to remain authentic at the same time. And that kind of, all that material became an ebook called Dance of the Writer, which I now give away free on my blog. And that ironically, it was when I kind of let go of the ego, let go of ambition controlling me that things started to happen. You know, I started to write better material I started to get a bigger following and that kind of led to a book contract and yeah and earlier this year I had my first book come out my first print book I've had a few ebooks come out earlier this year I had my first print book 
called Mosaic of Grace. And that went to number two on Amazon. And now I'm working on my second book, you know, so part of that journey was coaching writers as well. I kind of started to encounter people who were where I had been and to kind of work with them. And one in particular, I had all these ideas that I decided to just try because I'd never coached anyone before. And this person thought they were going to be, wanted to be something. They wanted, they thought they wanted to be a mummy blogger. But the first time I talked to them, I heard them talk about their passions and they weren't anything to do with that. So I tried to guide them towards what they were meant to be doing, which was working with pregnant women, doing natural births, talking about that process. And she started a business as a result of that and is now thriving in that business. You know, so, and she's still writing and still blogging about the stuff that she's doing, but it's different to what she thought. And I got such a buzz out of that, that I started to realize that I, I wanted to coach people. I wanted to encourage people. I wanted to help people grow and find their voice and find their calling. And that's what I do now with my writing and with my coaching and everything that I do. And there's always been a spiritual side to my stuff as well. I do a podcast as, you know, that kind of evolved and happened. Yeah, and I start, I'll talk about kind of my spiritual journey on my podcast. Yeah, and it's just lots of creativity, you know, and I love creating stuff and sharing it with people. And I believe everyone's got a story to tell and every story matters and everyone's work matters, whether only one person sees it or a million people see it, that every bit of creative work matters. And if it's truly authentic, then it doesn't matter how many people read it in a sense. It's that you've done the best work you can you know so yes I love that so really your writing career and your coaching all kind of really just evolved naturally as you realized what you really wanted to do and you've been able to use that and I think you have a very specific process are you still using that yes I am it's a very specific process which is it seems countercultural, but it doesn't begin with what you do it begins with who you are Mm -hmm. as in like what do you care about where does your value come from do you get your value from what other people think do you get your value from your relationships or from money or from status or from having a book contract or having a successful business or you do you just believe the truth which is that you're valuable as you are and your work is valuable even if no one pays for it even if no one ever sees it because you've made it your work is valuable like and I started off with that this is what I did with my first coaching client as an experiment and it worked because <laughs> because she she realized actually what she really wanted to do was not the thing she thought she wanted to do the thing she loved to do was different from the thing she thought she had to do and now she's yeah as I said she's thriving and doing that for her income she's writing about it and she feels really alive you know and it just begins with this you are enough you belong a lot of what Brené Brown kind of writes about and something I'm passionate about it's it's to do with my book as well my book is on grace and grace is the idea that you know we're enough and we belong and we're lovable as we are and that nothing is beyond redemption and that's kind of the process that I work through and I and I help people to create their life and build good habits and get a good group of people around them who will tell them the truth because we all need that we all need people who will tell us the truth whether we're having a we've had a big failure or whether we've had a big success that they will just tell us the truth they keep us grounded so you don't get carried away with success or too depressed or failure yeah yeah I think you've touched on some good things there like if we can just explore that a little bit creating and I noticed that with your story too like you develop this writing habit where you were writing every day even just for yourself and then you help people with creating the same thing and I think habit is such an important part of building that life that we truly want if we just shift some of our daily habits we can make a huge difference do you agree with that i do i really do i mean i'm not going to pretend that i get this right all the time you know i'm not perfect oh, me neither. <laughs> i would love to be doing more regularly you know i'd like to be meditating more i'd like to be doing yoga and exercise more and i'm trying still trying to do those things but it's not easy for any of us. And I think actually we have to give ourselves a bit of grace, but also at the same time, kind of not use that as an excuse to not try. And, you know, that's why you have accountability people because they keep you honest. Like, why are you really not doing this? Why are you really avoiding this? What is the real problem behind you not doing these things or doing things which are unhealthy? 
but at the same time, we need to kind of have grace with ourselves. So, yeah. I totally agree. When you wrote about grace, I think it's such an important topic that all of us can really use and work on applying every day in our lives and in our business, because we tend to be the hardest on ourselves, don't you think? Yes. Yes. I've had many people tell me that you would never talk to other people the way you talk to yourself, talk about yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm so hard on myself, you know, we, and we all do it. We all, we all do it. Yeah. Self-sabotage, punishing ourselves, talking ourselves down. We all do it. Mm-hmm. And we need to get out of that, you know. Yeah. And just like we were talking about habits, I mean, that can become a a habit for sure as well (laughs) that we have to break. Yeah. So is it okay if we talk a little bit about what it was like for you to go back into healing through your writing and and the creativity of writing? Because Mm -hmm. a lot of people might be intimidated or they might think I'm not a writer or, you know, what previously felt like okay to write and now they're in this weird space, right? So how can people heal again if they want to be writing? I think sometimes the best thing for your writing is to not publish anything, not do anything publicly. You don't have to. There's all this pressure now that so many people out there who should know better, to be honest, are kind of give the impression that your work only matters if lots of people see it. And your work has to be perfect. And your work has to be like and if it's not having an impact on other people then it's not worth anything that is just a lie um everyone's work is worth it even if they're the only person that sees it it is difficult i know i know i've started this little facebook group called anxious writers for writers who are struggling with anxiety about creative work and you know they have real real problems and they kind of get paralyzed by fear and they think they're not good enough and they think that you know, there's no point. Why are people going to think? And this is all fear. It's fear just trying to get in the way. And one of the things I often say is, what's the worst that could happen? You know, worst that could happen is probably that someone will tell you that they don't like it or publishers don't want it or whatever, you know. But we've got to kind of redefine success. Success is not the result. It's actually showing up and doing the work in the first place. Right? And even if the only right you can get out, one in a day is a sentence you've still done some writing you know that's better than nothing and I really do truly believe in the healing power of of writing and creating stuff it's so therapeutic for me like the last year or two I've been on a kind of personal journey into myself and dealing with a lot of stuff from big traumas from my past and one of the things that's helped has been writing and just writing it out nobody's ever seen that Mm-hmm. Um, nobody's seen that writing some of it may come out in a book one day some of it nobody will see but I know that doing that really helped me clarify what was inside because what I find is when I'm writing just from my heart and I'm writing what's inside it actually gives me clarity it helps me understand and things that are in there that I didn't even know were in there come out and it's like oh right that's why that happens that's why I do that that's where that comes from you know it really makes such a difference because it kind of gets it out of us it gets that pain out of us sorry to cut you off but I think like one of the things that I talk about is impact driven right and I talk about the levels of impact so you know we can have an impact on ourselves in our family and and I feel like ourselves is that center like target right And we can have an impact on our family, on our friends, on those people around us, and even giving back to other charities and things like that on the periphery, right? But it all starts with you and with that center. And so going back to you, you had mentioned like, it doesn't matter if it doesn't make an impact on anybody, it's making an impact on you and you can use that writing therapeutically, right? Yeah, that was the point. Yeah, I was coming to is like, that's the lie your writing won't have an impact it will because just doing some writing will have an impact on you it will change you Mm -hmm. Um, you know if you show up and just do and it doesn't have to be good it can be rubbish spelling and grammar it can be poorly written it can be it doesn't matter but if you show up and do it you will be changed by it there is no doubt about that and sometimes those stories resonate with other people as well because 
actually when you i mean when you if you do want to share your work and you do decide to share it what you often find is that there's other people out there who are just the same and you're not alone after all and that might be 10 people it might be a thousand people but yeah i think that's powerful yeah i think and yeah i think it's a great piece of advice is like not sharing it with people i like what you just mentioned reminded me of something one of my mentors told me and she said don't pay attention or take advice business advice from anybody who's not where you want to be right so if my mom were to come in and criticize my business <laughs> and it's a horrible example because she would never do that but you know what i mean she has not built a successful business and so i'm going to take her advice more light compared to okay, my mentor who has the exact business that I want, only she is making a lot more money, I'm going to take advice from her, right? And so I think it goes back to, are you listening to yourself? Are you relying on other people and seeking for approval from other people? And also when you just stop publishing it and you can just write for yourself, it can just be for you, for your healing, for your therapy, and I don't know if therapy is the best word, right? But for your own creative sake, and then also not take into account or not have to worry about what other people might think until you heal your relationship with what other people think. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. Well, your work cannot be dependent on the opinions of others. Mm -hmm. and, oh. and I think creative work in a business is so similar to any creative work we're going to do either with writing or visual art or anything. It's just the same. I mean, we're building something out of nothing yeah. and you have the opportunities and the ability to make it anything you want. So it's really important that you tap into creativity in other ways so that you can stay creative in your business. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I would say actually that starting a business is essentially a creative act you know that's what it is because you're bringing something into the world that wasn't there before you're starting mm -hmm. something new and you get to shape it mm -hmm. starting a business from you know almost from scratch is essentially a creative act people and it's, there's always like this kind of art v business thing and i don't agree with that i mean my perspective is that business is a support system for art mm -hmm. um, so often people make it the other way around that their art is to support their business and that's the wrong way around. If your artist to support your business, then you will just create what makes the most money and gets the most hits. And that won't be your authentic work. That will be just, might be very successful, but it won't be your authentic work. It won't be you. And you can lose your soul doing that. You might make a lot of money, but you'll lose something in the process. I think business is really important, but I think it's a support system for art rather than the other way around. I think it's something that you have and that you need in a sense, like if you're, say, if you're a coach or a, you know, you publish books, or you run writing programs or whatever, it's a support system for that. It allows you to create your authentic work. And that's how it should be, I think. One should not influence the other, in a sense. Business certainly should not impact the art. Although, obviously, when you're writing something for public consumption, it is important that you tailor it to, you know, what you write, you create it in a way which can serve people. It can still be your authentic work, but you can shape it in a way where it can connect with people and, you know, calls to action and questions and that kind of thing. That's why telling our story is so powerful, because most people will connect with something in your story and it's your story and it's unique. But somebody somewhere will connect with it because there's way more people out there who've been where you are than you think there are. Yeah. So. Yeah, I love that. I think that. That's true. And, and it kind of got me thinking about, you know, we both see eye to eye about values and integrity and running our business with great integrity. Mm. And something we've talked about before has been like, for us, it's not so much about being the multimillionaire. <laughs> it's more about how can we serve and how can we really make a difference with our work and we can do that by being authentic and like you're saying here if we're writing for public right so if it's like writing a book or something how is it going to serve people and i think you just gave such a great 
great way that somebody can gracefully help somebody and not be pushy or salesy or any of that, but, but we can really just share our message authentically through our story and sharing what we've been through is, I think it's a huge part of what marketing (laughs) and sale. No, no, yes. Story is a great way to market. You know, I, I've done the story brand course and that's it talks about story as a way to market things and in a good way, in a healthy way, you know, because story is how we connect. It's how we relate to each other, you know, that our, our lives are story. So I'm very passionate about the power of story. That's what I want to help people do when I coach them is to live a great story and create a great story, you know, create a great life. It doesn't mean they're always going to be happy or anything like that. It just means that be who you're meant to be be your true self that takes a lot of courage because it involves risk it involves uncertainty it involves a lot of faith whether you're religious or not it involves trusting yourself trusting other people who you've got around you but it's worth it i mean i've been through this really difficult process of like lots of coaching lots of therapy lots of spiritual direction and it was painful a lot of it It was difficult it was challenging coming towards the end of that process and I'm still in that process in many ways, coming towards the like the last third of it, I, I, would, I would say, it's worth it, you know, because it changes you and it actually helps you discover who you really are and who you always were and gets rid of the stuff that you've put up to get in the way of that. Yeah. I mean, talk about authenticity. I mean, that is getting to be really authentically you. I mean, there's nothing like that in the world. Yeah, I agree. I mean, one of the reasons I like, I hired you as a coach was because when I talked to you, you were interested in in how you could help me. You were interested in my story. You were interested in my thriving. You were interested in helping me grow. And it was almost like it wasn't work for you. It was something you did because you just genuinely loved to do it. Because that that's, is true. <laughs> yeah, it is true. It is. You know, I, I know you well enough to know that it is. And that's exactly the same with me. I mean, I do what I do because I love to do it, not because, not not for the money. You know, it's not about money. I mean, making money is a good thing and we should acknowledge that. And wanting to make money is not a bad thing, as long as you don't idolise money. But at the core of any kind of business, there should be a desire to serve people and help people and genuine love for people and belief in people. And they're the people that I that I've worked with both as a coach and as been on the receiving end of and as a recipient of coaching, you know, that people who want to help people, um, who want to make a positive impact, um, not yeah. just people who want to build a platform because that's, you know, this seems a bit empty that, but people who actually want to make a difference and help people. Yeah. They're, they're really great. Yeah. And I think too, like it goes back to being able to do that with, 100% integrity. So for me, it's always been really important, right, to make sure that I can really and truly serve the person to the best of my ability. So mm-hmm. there's been times where, and we've talked about it, we've even had other discussions around this, but if somebody comes to me, I absolutely positively will not sell to them unless I know I can help them 100%. And, you know, there's been times in my practice where a client actually needs a different type of coach and I will gladly refer them to somebody else instead of quote unquote continuing the business and you know making money for myself it's not even about me right and I think it comes from my nursing background or just the way that I operate but I think it takes a really really serviceful and really heart-centered place to really run your business like that and you and I have talked about that because I've been on the receiving end where that has not been the case and it's been the horrible Mm. Um, so I think running our business with integrity is the most important thing besides serving (laughs) yeah that's right yeah and again it's not about how much money your business makes in a sense Mm -hmm. you you make some money from your business but not enough to live on you know maybe you have to have a part-time job or even a full-time job while you run your business on the outside. Many people start that way. Many people start by having a full-time job, um, starting their business on the side. That's what I'm doing right now. You know, and that's how I started too. 
And you know what? It allowed me to have the space to make those difficult decisions, right? So yeah. I never had to even second guess myself and say like, oh, well, I should just take that person on, right? I just knew, well, it's not, I can't serve them or they would be better off with this other person or I can serve them and I am going to offer this to them, whatever the question is. But if you're having to make the money on that next client to pay your bills, you're not going to be at the same ease of making those difficult decisions. Yeah, I've been in that place. Because when I didn't have a job and I was trying to be a coach, I really struggled right? because I, I struggled to feel I was being authentic because I was so desperate for income. And it's really dangerous, you know, for me then, you know, to not lose my authenticity. Like, I had to be careful. And I decided, actually decided to take a break from doing coaching because I wanted to get a job so that I could just focus on doing the coaching for the right reasons, doing it to help people. And you know, manage my time well and start just building something up, you know, and then if it does well and I start making my full-time living out of it, that will be great. that will be awesome. But if I don't, I'm still going to do it because I love it and because I get to help people. So. Yeah, I totally agree. If anybody listening is kind of like, oh my God, I don't know. I totally agree with you. Like if you need to take a break, if you need to get a side job, or whatever it is so that you can be in full integrity in your business and so that you can run your business the way that you want to run it. So for me, when I first started, I was still working at my nine to five job and it was great. I mean, I was able to put a lot of the money I was making right back into my business and it helped my business to grow quicker. So that was one positive aspect for sure. And Mm -hmm. I've coached people who had to either go back to jobs or get different types of jobs and transition, you know, part-time or whatever, or even leave their nine to five job. All these are huge decisions. And I think that in order for us to be in full integrity as we're making these big decisions is to really hone into what is it that we really want and can I be in integrity doing this? Yeah, absolutely. And it's better to have integrity than, to me, it's better to have integrity than make a ton of money. I mean, I'd like to make a lot of money. I'd like to make income from my coaching and and maybe speaking as well, do workshops and things to help writers and creative people. Because I, but I want to do those things because I want to help people. But if I can make my living doing that, I would love to. You know, that would be like a dream. You know, I would really love to. And that's what I'm trying to do because I would love to do that. But if I don't end up doing that, I'll still keep doing it you know I'll still keep creating stuff keep writing books keep writing posts for medium keep writing for the Huffington Post keep coaching people because I love to do it and I feel like it's what I'm here for you know it's my vocation yeah I love that so tell us where people can learn more about you learn more about your work and connect with you deeper okay well there's quite a few places my blog is jamesprescott.co.uk That's basically where you can find links to everything I do. My podcast is there. It's called Poema Podcast, which is poem with an A on the end. It's a a word that's linked with creativity and identity and spirituality. You can listen to that there. You can also read blog posts there. And you can get links to my Medium page and my Huffington Post page there as well. And And we're looking to these in the show notes. So if you go to your podcast player and just click on the full show notes and it'll take you to the website, they'll all be there. Yeah. Yeah. And my coaching is on my website as well. And you can find me on Twitter at James Prescott 77. I'm on Medium as well. Um, There's a Medium page, James Prescott. I'm one of the top writers on creativity and, and writing now on Medium. So I'll be on that list if you look. And you can find all my articles there as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing about authenticity and creativity and integrity. I think, I mean, who better to have on to talk about this than you? So thank you. Thank you. Such a privilege to be on. Have an awesome day. Yeah. Take care. Bye. 
So there you have it, another episode of the Impact Driven Entrepreneur. And if you're interested in learning more about coaching one-on-one with me, please go to impactdrivenentrepreneur.com slash strategy and schedule to get on the waiting list for a discovery call with me. We do have some openings right now in our one-on-one program with me. And so if you feel like that would be a good fit for where you are in your business, come and join us at impactdrivenentrepreneur.com slash strategy. Have an awesome day.